And here's how it went down. Master, they're not coming because of this. What? And the more they spoke, the angrier he got because of what they thought was better than his banquet. And he said, this is utter madness that you think what you gave as an excuse is better than what I'm offering. Some of you are getting ahead of me. No matter what philosophy is out there, and I've met it. I was at the University of California 10 years. I met the eggheads of the eggs. There is no philosophy that should keep you away from the banquet table of Jesus Christ. Nothing. Now look at me. Someone said, well, I don't want to serve God. Christianity's too hard. What have you been smoking? Christianity's too hard. Christianity is what you were designed for. Christianity is the thing that works. Christianity is like that moment that you discover this is what a mind is for. This is what a heart is for. This is what a future is for. This is what love is for. This is what marriage is for. And everything else is hard. I have always met people that believed they were going to be the first of their kind. The first successful drug addict. The first pimp who didn't get busted. The first gang member. And it gets serious. We have 300,000 young people in gangs in Los Angeles. And the experts say that they will die by the age of 20. L.A. is going to have 300,000 kids die before their 21st birthday because of gang. But not you. You're the gangster that's going to make it right. You're the, look, you're the pimp that's going to do it right. You're the addict that's going to enjoy it. It's not going to, it's going to affect everyone else's liver, but not yours. It's going to ruin everyone else's mind. And then you turn around and look at a Christian who went to the banquet table, got his body right, his mind right, his future right, his emotion. You're not helping me enough. He got everything right and it fell into place. And the only thing you can see is the persecution. That's why Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He got angry. Because of what they thought was better. You think Scientology is better. It's a movement founded in a bar in a pub in England when two men bet each other 10 grand that they could invent a religion. And if you go see the movie, you'll see how ridiculous it is. I could go through one religion after another right now. I could literally capsulize it for you and tell you that atheism is absolutely a stark, bankrupt desert. It will end nowhere. Your mind is not trained or created to think that this is an accident. And the Bible tells us that he called his servants together and he looked at them all and he said these words. Today, you are no longer my gardener, he said to his gardener. He said, you are no longer my chef. You're no longer going to polish my brass. You are no longer going to be my pastry chef. And you're not going to be my butler. Because I'm so angry that these people didn't show up to my banquet that I'm sending you out to get the poor to spite them. I want the filet mignon to be in front of the poor man. I want the homeless to be the one that sits in this lavish feast. And while these idiots are out there thinking they've got something better, they're going to find out what losers they are. Am I preaching yet? I would to God that I could get through to every pastor, and I love you, 
You're my friends. I'm for you. But you need to do what this banquet band did. Get your whole church staff together and say, you're no longer about skinny jeans, fog machines, and big screens. Today, we're going to be about winning souls and outreach. And we're going to go out and get the lost. And we're going to bring them in. Because just because the religious crowd doesn't want the Holy Spirit. Yeah. To God be the glory. I've seen a lot of people get saved. I want to. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to stop in a minute. I'm trying to stop. You know. But I've seen a lot of people get saved. I've seen some very shockingly messed up people get saved. I did. And it struck me that what is a, a, a chair in a church, really? Because the, the banquet man said these words, look at me, my house must be full. And people look at Mario and they say, you seem like you're talking out of both sides of your mouth. Because one thing you're telling pastors, they should not be totally obsessed with church growth. But by the same token, you say there should never be an empty seat in a church. Never. Any more than there should be an empty hospital bed in a pandemic. Any more than there should be an empty seat in a lifeboat in a sinking ship. And we are the ones that need the help. We are the people invited to the banquet who said no. And the churches of California have got to wake up. You know, look, listen to me. This highfalutin thing that you're the the mega church, you're the guys, you're in charge, we're the ones. God can take these sparkling campuses and replace them with a movement of ex-drug addicts, homeless people, <laughs> prostitutes, and gangbangers. I call them the Lazarus generation. God can replace you and send them to the banquet that you turned down. <laughs> 